Thank you so much. I'm, this is my first time seeing my art. So cool, right? That was like me at the Now Pass before. I was just like taking a little video. I had to like take it in, right? Everybody out there, make sure to create some content. Tag Chris, you know, so he has plenty to repost. Um, but dude, Chris, like, yo, I mean, there's a where to begin, you know? Like, it's been an amazing journey for, for you and for Young Cat. Um, you know, I think maybe just to kind of set the tone uh, for those here who maybe just know what they've seen online but don't know the story behind it, maybe take it like take it from the top. Give us a little bit of that overview, the origin story. Like, how did Nyong Cat come to be? Oh, man, okay. Um, well, Nyong Cat was really just a mix of just randomness, uh, cats, and my love of pixel art, really. Um, way back in 2011, I was practicing with pixel art, and... Back in the day, I was putting my cat in comics all the time. He's like my main character. Um, my cat is actually Marty. He's a Russian blue. He's such a cute cat. Um, but yeah, one day there was, you know, there was like, I was doing like a charity drive one day and I was just drawing stuff for tips for people. And I was just like, what do you guys want to see? What do you guys want to, what do you guys want me to draw? So people started throwing out all these suggestions out there. So I took all the suggestions, put them all together. And it was just like a really simple doodle of a cat with rainbows just going in all directions. Um, and really, it was just like really fun and cute. It was just something that was just so random. Um, then I remember waking up that night going, you know, I really need, I really want to like pixelize this thing because it just felt like the right thing to do. So I stayed up all night and I, <laughs> and I made the original Ant Cat. Uh, and then I posted it on Twitter and I posted it on Tumblr. And then I went to sleep, and then I woke up, and it was like instantly, like I woke up the next day, and it was like instantly, like all over the place, all over the internet. So it was a huge surprise for me. Uh, but yeah, it just kind of exploded, and it's just, I thought it would just be like, you know, a little small thing, but it just kept going and going, and it just kind of started, you, people started making their own remixes, people started dressing up their cats, their, their, their kids, like so many different people were making all sorts of versions of the cat, which was just amazing. And now it's been 13 years now, and Yan Cat is, yeah, <laughs> it's insane. Um, yeah, it's been 13 years now, and Yan Cat is just still everywhere. Everybody, like kids, they're still finding it. And it's, just, it's just amazing. It's just fantastic to see all the creativity of everybody enjoying Yan Cat. I love that. I love that. And you know, one of the things I remember, you know, we've, we've had a chance to chat a few times. Not like this. This is really dope, right? Yeah. We've had some great, like, Twitter spaces, things like that. And one of the things that always stood out to me about your journey. I, you know, I've, I've used Nyongkat as an example, actually, of like how NFTs and this technology can really unlock like cultural cap, the cultural capital of like of, of, of a movement or a meme or something created, you know, that, that was more difficult to kind of find that value or to, or to unlock that value before. So like, like when Nyongkat blew up, I mean, at one point it was like, you know, the most like watched YouTube video, right? And like, and it's still one of the most, right? Yeah, um, I think it's got like 2 billion views. 2 billion views. Yeah. Insane. <laughs> And so, obviously, touched a lot of people, right? But in those early days, it was kind of like, as a creator, it's like, well, how do you monetize that? Because that was challenging at the beginning, right? I remember you telling me about going to like meme conventions and like you would do like, okay, like mugs and like hood and like 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 uh, merch and things like that. But like, you know, it, it wasn't you weren't able to like really direct directly unlock that value. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it was kind of a mixed bag, you know. It, the, part of the meme process was letting other people have fun with it. Uh, but, you know, I, I was able to ha actually, I was really grateful to be in connections with, like, companies that had toys that went to Toys R Us, uh, this stuff, the Hot Topic, and stuff like that. So there were ways that I was able to monetize of it. But it's really just like, I don't know, I just like that it's out there. It's not, it's never been about the money sort of thing. But, you know, it's, it's always nice. But, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's always one of those things, like, it just kind of exists on the internet. Everybody kind of has their own fun with it. Uh, you know, and, and honestly, with Web3, it's, it, that's kind of been my way to actually get proper attribution for my work. Like, not only that, people now know that there's a base in the end cap, and it's actually inspired me to be, get more creative. Like, all of these pieces, most of these pieces are pieces that I've created just in the past few years. Uh, I've remixed a few of them, but some of them, like the biker, pirate, like the, all the balloons and all that, this is all something new that just kind of came forth um, ever since I joined Web3. It's just been a really fun adventure ever since. I love that. Let's talk a little bit about your entry point to Web3 because obviously it was a big, it was a big moment when the original Young Cat one of one sold for 300 ETH, I believe, right? Yeah. 2021. And that also, not, you didn't stop there though. You also helped, you played a key role in bringing a lot of other meme creators into the space, right? Helping them find the value in like the cultural kind of capital that they had created through their meme. So tell us a little bit about that. 
that was that, that was such a wild moment. I can't. I just can't believe that still happened. So when Yantet sold, it actually like was a beacon to other meme creators. So all of these people started contacting me, and going, "Hey, I made this meme. Help me out." And so then I was like, "Okay, let's." You know, first I had to verify that they were real people, uh, and then I was like, "Okay, let's do it." So we just kind of like lined up a whole line of, of meme artists, like Grumpy Cat, Keyboard Cat, Scumbag Steve. Uh, oh my god, there's a whole list, uh, Coffin Dance, Side Eye Chloe, uh, literally dozens of meme artists all came up and they all wanted their, their artwork to be, you know, turned into NFTs. And it was awesome because those people also were like in the same realm with me where they released something, it blew up and it got bigger than they could control it and they never really saw anything from it. So the NFT was actually really helpful for them, you know, going forward. I love that. And you've been very active, you know, like in terms of continuing to build the non-cat project. You know, you've had a number of different kind of creative elements of that. As you said, a lot of this artwork that we're seeing up here, you created very recently, right? So tell us a little bit about the evolution of Nyan Cat and how you've kind of launched, you know, these different projects with it. Um, I, I'm very particular with Nyan Cat and just pixel art in general. I'm very pixel perfect on everything that I do. And really it's just, I try to get in the creative theme of things. I, I don't I, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain the chaos inside my mind, but I always try to do a little bit better of myself. So actually, if you look at like my recent artwork, it gets just a little bit better each time. I, I try to challenge myself each time just a little bit more. And it's been really fun. It's, it's also really been really stressful, but it's, it's such an accomplishment when the piece is finished and it loops perfectly and it looks amazing on the screen. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's just like a, it's just a big, I don't know, it just feels awesome to like complete a piece and put it out there and see that people really enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously there's been a lot of pop culture crossover, right? Like yeah. some of the biggest shows, Simpsons, like Family Guy, like, you know, and some of the biggest brand collaborations like the Nikes and the Coca-Cola's, like, what has that been like? And how, is, how has your approach been in kind of like, you know, keeping kind of like the ethos of Nyan Cat and, and keeping that special while also like branching out into these different opportunities? I always, well, I always kind of, first of all, I don't like reach out to people. I always kind of let, let people reach out to me. And then from there, I try to see, I basically try to see if it's something cool to work with. Like, I try to make sure that the people that I'm working with understand what Yanket is, understand what the meme is. Um, so there's a lot of that out there. Uh, but yeah, it's been really awesome an experience. I've gotten to work with Nike. Uh, Google has, has it like hidden in their Google Drive. Um, I, then I recently was featured on The Simpsons, which was so funny. It was like an NFT. What a episode. moment, right? That was an awesome episode. And honestly, like a lot of people think that episode was like bad for NFTs, but I honestly think whoever wrote that episode like understood NFTs, and I think it was like a, I think it was like a love letter to NFTs. Uh, I completely agree. Like, like a good natured, like kind of poking fun. Yeah, that, yeah. We, I mean, we do that every day. Like we do zero all the time out here. So you know, that's that's how I saw the episode, and I loved it. Uh, yeah, and it's also been featured on, I remember The Leftovers did it, they reached out to me, and that was so funny, because in the scene, uh, the guy's just like, what's going on, and, and, and it's there. Uh, and yeah, it's been, it's just kind of been all over the place. Uh, new parodies or official memes, Yankat has kind of broken traditional memes in kind of a way, and, and it just kind of showed that memes, digital art can exist all over the world, and kind of like, be understood by everybody out there. Absolutely. What does the future look like for the John Cat project? Like, what do you have in the works? Like, what are what do you got kind of working on? Uh, I mean, I'm still working on the projects. Uh, you know, kind of keep everything close to my chest because people like to take my ideas and, and just kind of you know get ahead of me on things. Uh, so, but you know, I'm just I'm just out here every single day. I'm chronically online, as some of you know. <laughs> and you know, honestly, Nancat doesn't re you know Nancat kind of exists in its own little realm. It, it exists. It flies on space endlessly, and, and you know, and it's just gonna keep going. I think. I love that. You know, having created one of the OG memes, you know, like one of the most original, most most like kind of enduring memes of the internet. Like, you know, obviously, I, I'm curious at your perspective because memes have been such a strong narrative of the, of the current cycle we're in from like the rise of meme coins to like meme art and all of these things. And I'm curious, like having been in like as a, as a creator of one of the most successful memes of all time, um, you know, the, the, the YouTube views don't lie, right? You know, it's like, what is, what is it like to kind of see the evolution of like the meme economy, essentially? I mean, I love, I love artists creating stuff and getting, you know, proper attribution for the work. I feel like that is 
the best part of me. It's like me people being creative, trying new things, and finding success along the way. So I hope to see more of that out there. I mean, it, it, we're already seeing a crazy evolution, a crazy new realm of games out there. So um, I'm curious enough, and I'm curious as much as everybody else to see how it goes. But I think you know it's really cool seeing content creators actually have some fun with it. 100 percent. Well, as you can tell, we're all having fun with this. Our time is up for this one, but give it up for Chris Torres, creator of Neoncat. Thank you, everybody.